Do you know how much wool a single Tasmanian sheep produces alone? 13 kgs of wool. That's enough to make 61 pairs of socks and 27 full men's suits. But why is it so popular? Wool fibers have naturalistic properties that can outperform synthetic fibers. Wool products can last longer, demand less frequent washing at low temperatures, is readily recyclable and is also biodegradable in both land and water, and does not contribute to any microplastic pollution. Hey guys, welcome to our channel How It's Made. In this video today, we take an inside look into how the creations and origins of wool. But before jumping into the video, if you're new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. That said, let's begin. Origins of wool As with many archaeological findings of early man, anthropologists consider the use of wool came out of the challenge of survival. In aiming means of security and warmth, humans in the Neolithic age wore animal furs as clothing. Finding the furs not only warm and comfy, but also long-lasting, they soon began to create the basic functions and primal tools for making wool. By 4000 BC, Babylonians were wearing clothes of crudely woven fabric. Interestingly, people soon started to evolve and maintain herds of wool-bearing animals. The wool of sheep was soon identified as one of the most practical to use. In the middle of the trading period of the 11th and 12th centuries, the wool trade flew like rocket. The English had become skilled in the raising of sheep, while the Flemish had acquired the skills for processing. As a result, the British started to sell their wool to the Flemish who processed the raw material and then sold it back to the English. The money-minded, devious British soon discovered the benefits of both producing and processing their own wool. As Britain began to thrive, it sought to improve its position by legislating laws and sanctions that would stimulate its domestic production. Some laws, for instance, required that judges, professors, and students wear robes made of English wool. Another law instructed that the dead be buried in native wool. When the American territories began to compete with the motherland, the English gave a series of laws in an endeavor to safeguard their golden fleece. One law even jeopardized the amputation of the hand of any colonist captured trying to enhance the bloodline of American sheep. Today, wool is a profitable global industry, with Australia, Argentina, the United States, and New Zealand operating as the major suppliers of raw wool. While the United States is the biggest buyer of wool fabric, Australia is the leading supplier. Australian wool accounts for roughly one-fourth of the planet's production. What for decades was a small home-based craft has grown into a major business. The annual international output is now estimated at $6.7 billion. Though cotton is the number one plant used for textiles and the number one fiber overall, the number one origin for animal fiber is still wool. How it's made? The process of wool making starts with shearing. In simple words, shearing is the process of cutting sheep's fur. Sheep are clipped once a year, usually in the springtime. A veteran shearer can clip up to 3,000 sheep per day. The fleece recovered from a sheep can weigh between 6 and 18 pounds as much as possible and the fiber is kept in one piece. While most sheep are still clipped by hand, new technologically advanced machines have been produced that use computers and sensitive robot-controlled arms to do the most clipping. This has firmly reduced human effort and firm cuttings of the wool. After shearing, the next process in line is grading. Grading is the breaking up of the fleece based on overall quality. In sorting, the wool is broken up into areas of different quality fibers from various parts of the body. The best quality of wool comes from the shoulders and sides of the sheep and is used for major clothing. Zara is a leading brand of buying wool and rugs are made from the lesser quality from the lower legs. In wool grading, a high grade does not always mean increased durability. After collecting the wool, the wool is inspected for any uniformity and the workers separate the wool if the strands are poor. Their freshly shaded wool includes and dirt, grease and dried sweat. And these weight contaminants account for about 30 to 70% of the fleece's total weight. To remove these extra contaminants, the wool is scrubbed in a series of alkaline baths stemming water, soap, soda ash or a similar alkali. The byproducts from this method are saved and utilized in a variety of household products. Rollers in the automatic scouring machines squeeze surplus water from the fleece, but the fleece is not permitted to dry totally. Following this process, the wool is often dyed with oil to give it advanced manageability. Next in line is the process of carding. 
The worlds are passed through a sequel of metal teeth that untangle and blend them into slivers. Carding also separates residual dirt and other matter left in the fibers. These carded wool planned for worsted yarn is put through gilling and combing, two procedures that remove short fibers and place the longer fibers parallel to each other. From there, the sleeker slivers are squeezed and thinned through another process. Carded wool to be used for woolen yarn is sent instantly for spinning. Thread is formed by reeling the fibers together to form one strand of yarn. The strand is spun with two, three or four other strands. Since the wools cling and attach to one another, it is relatively easy to join, extend and spin wool into yarn. Spinning for woolen yarns is generally done on a mule spinning machine, while worsted yarns can be rotated on any number of spinning machines. After the yarn is spun, it is covered around bobbins, cones or commercial drums. Next, the wool yarn is knitted into fabric. Wool factories use two primary weaves, the plain weave and the twill. Woolen yarns are made into the fabric using a plain weave which delivers a fabric of a somewhat looser weave and a soft texture with little or no luster. The napping often covers flaws in construction. Worsted yarns can make fine fabrics with magnificent patterns using a twill weave. The outcome is a more tightly woven, smooth fabric. Better formed, worsteds are more long-lasting than woolens and therefore more costly. Now comes the final procedure of the wool. After weaving, both worsteds and woolens experience a series of finishing procedures including fulling, crabbing, decating and occasionally dyeing. Although wool fibers can be dyed before the carding process, dyeing can also be done after the wool has been woven into the fabric. Now this wool is ready to be made into high-end sweaters of Burberry or an overcoat of Zara. Facts about wool that will blow your mind away. How much wool does a sheep produce? A single sheep produces 1 to 13 kilograms of wool per year. This amount depends greatly on race, nutrition, genetics and the time between each cut. On average, the shearing of a Tasmanian sheep is enough to make 8 sweaters and 61 pairs of socks, but it could be much more than that. The Guinness World Record belongs to the sheep named Chris, who in 2015 was found wandering in the South New Wales, Australia. It hadn't been shown in years, growing up 41 kilograms of fleece enough to produce 27 large men's suits. Wools are worn in desert. Wool is one of the most hygroscopic fibers and it is also extremely breathable. It absorbs moisture from the air without giving the feeling of being wet, helping your body to cool off in the summer. That's why it's even used in the desert. Woolen socks does not make your feet stink. Wool can withstand the smell of feet and mold longer than synthetic fibers because it's a natural moisture repellent. In the gym, wool socks are the best choice. Wool was once worth as much as gold. The ransom for the release of King Richard I, the Lionheart, captured on his way back from the Third Crusade, was also paid in the highly valued English wool. That's it guys, let us know if you found this video informative in the comment section. Also if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next one.